Can you hear? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, welcome. I'm Sammy Dunn. I'm head of our hospitality and I'm lay, cha uh, lay chair for the church. And I'm here this morning to tell you a little bit about what I do, who I am, where I came from, why I'm here. And so as we get started, are all of you all new members or members that have been here for a while or? I think we've all been here for a while. Okay, and have you all taken the tour? Okay, and so those of you who haven't taken the tour, we will do one afterwards if you want to do that after this class is over with. So um, my name is Sammy Dunn. We joined this church in 2005. I have been married 46 years and have two sons and six grandchildren, which keep me very busy. Our youngest son is a missionary in Indonesia, and uh, he's over there for five years, and then our older son is in Austin. Um, my, the definition of hospitality in the dictionary is the friendly and generous reception and entertainment of guests, visitors, and strangers. Needless to say, I was asked to uh, greet for one of our annual conferences about five years ago. And when I finished, I was hooked because that's what I enjoy doing. I worked for law offices for years and in banking, and when I retired, the thing I was going to do is to do volunteer work and stuff at the church. Um, I work alongside with uh, Reverend Graff, and, and like I said, I am the hospitality chair and the chairman of the lay committee. And Chuck and I are working, working hard to build a team of people who enjoy serving others through hospitality. Each Sunday, you may have noticed the carts out front and on the west side. Those are stacked with volunteers that belong to the hospitality team to welcome visitors to our church on Sunday morning. Their presence there has made a difference in our church and the, with someone at those carts, it's a lot easier if someone doesn't know their way or they want to know where the restroom is or how to get to a Sunday school class. It helps to have them almost out front. We would love to have some of our new members become part of this team and I'm not here to recruit you. I'm just here to tell you that if you would like to do something like that and you're interested in that, or it's something you just want to try once, you're more than welcome because I don't want anybody to think I'm pushing hospitality unless you really want to do that. Uh, we're going to play, we're having a couple of new, we have a couple of events beginning um, Father's Day. We'll have a uh, refreshments and a small gift for all the fathers in the church. In July, we'll have, on July the 4th, we'll have a event in the gardens. In the fall, of, um, in the fall we'll have um, where we bless the teachers, where we take boxes of cookies. I think some of you may have done the Christmas where we took boxes of cookies and things to the EMS and fire and police. We will do that again in December, but we also are going to do teachers in the fall and honor our teachers in the church as well as in the community. Um, and there are a lot of ways to get involved in, in the church. I think I handed you all a uh, paper from the church that tells about what all's going on. I'm also uh, a volunteer at our First Street Mission. And on the front page, uh, Reverend Hines is our director of that mission. And, she, and so I work down there on Mondays with the homeless. And if you've never ever experienced that you need to at least come see. It's one of the most fulfilling things you'll ever do in your life because you see from them what, how blessed and truly blessed you are and how little they have, yet they're how thankful they are to be welcomed by our church. We do a breakfast in, at our disciple church, and I'm part of the disciple church, um, is three hours. We do a breakfast in the morning from eight, from 7.20, 7.30 until eight. Then we have the church service and then we have a formation group. But I <coughs> encourage all of you at some point to visit that breakfast on that in a mor on a morning if you get up early and wanna come and see what it's all about. It's just real enlightening to know that how blessed each and every one of you all are in this room and how many people are on the street that don't have a thing, yet they appreciate everything we do. Uh, 
and I want to say that, again, I don't want any of you to think I'm here to twist your arm, but I'm here to let you know what we do and what's happening in this church and how many opportunities there are other than just what I do and what Betty does. And we have mission trips and we have all sorts of things. We have first friends and I know you all must know about first friends. <laughs> because we, and Michael Dixon was supposed to have been here and, and didn't. So, and I am not as familiar with first friends as, I mean, I was a first friend, but I wasn't there long enough to really speak on his behalf. But I have information about first friends, if any of you all ever decide you want to do that. That is also rewarding if you don't mind walking down to the front of the church on a Sunday morning. And then also, I know you all, probably most of you, get, have computers and you get the church newsletter online. Our uh, poster child is Dr. Reverend Brewster. <laughs> and he is on all our events. And these will be coming out uh, I think monthly we will change, Chuck and I will change up the events and the things that we will have to do and you might be a, might want to do some of it or you might just want to read about it. But uh, we're going to use Dr. Brewster as our child to, to uh, get your attention. And uh, if you get an email from me, I'm sending emails out to every member of the church for the last six months that's new. If you don't want that email to come to you all, just send me back an email and say, take me off of your list. We're basically doing that just so that the new members of the church can get an idea of what we're doing. And if they want to help or want to do something, they can. But th there again, there's no thing where you have to sign your name and say, I'll do something, or you have to commit to a month, or you have to commit to, you know, just give it a try, come see what we do, and you can go from there. I'm going to now let Betty Johnson take over and talk about the Costa Rica trip. And Betty can also talk about first friends because, have you been, a, you have been, yeah, so she's been a first friend also. So I'll let her talk about Costa Rica. I am Betty Johnson and my husband David and I joined the church about five and a half years ago. We came from a smaller church in the area and we really and truly wanted to just come and be pew ploppers. And you know what a pew plopper is? Somebody who comes to church, plops down on the pew, makes themselves at home during worship service, and then goes home. We were perfectly content doing that because we didn't have to be responsible for anything other than just our own personal growth and development. Okay, fine. We were, we were happy doing that for about a year and a half. And then I don't know if you know uh, Chuck Graff, but he's about 6'4" and a half and he's kind of hard to miss and he has these really long arms that love to hug so anyway he said there was a little article in the bulletin about the church mission trip to Costa Rica and my husband and I have been involved with youth mission trips at our former church we've done that been there done that had the t-shirts literally to prove we've been there done that slept on the floor with about 40 other kids and you know it was great it was very fulfilling very meaningful it was hard work but we see this little article about an adult mission trip to Costa Rica we had been to Costa Rica we hadn't been with just adults on a mission trip and we thought well let's just go to the informational meeting and see what it's all about let me tell you Adult mission trips are kind of like the extreme sports of church activities. <laughs> we not only went, we've been twice. David really wanted to go this year as well, but scheduling conflicts happened. But it kind of just sucks you into the vortex. You get this emotional adrenaline high and you go, I'm going to go next year. Just sign me up. I'm going to go next year. And again, you're thinking, What's so cool about a mission trip to Costa Rica? Well, first of all, Costa Rica is way cool. 8% of all life form known to man is found in that little bitty country. We saw itty bitty teeny tiny miniature bees. We saw great big holler monkeys. We saw a little bit of everything. 
it was beautiful. We see, did see a lot of rain. Did you know if your suit, if your clothes get wet in your suitcase and you hang them on your balcony to dry in a rainforest, they don't dry? <laughs> Just a note. Um, but anyway, the mission trip, what we did is we, we bonded. There were 22 of us and we became a cohesive unit. Uh, we would wake up early in the mornings, we'd have breakfast together, we'd head off to the church. In the first year, we were finishing a sanctuary that our church had been a part of for five years previously. So we were finishing up on that. Um, I was on the fabulous paint team. We painted the sanctuary, which was huge. There were three of us at all times. We changed out people mostly except for me. They just let me paint all the time. Yeah, I was pretty harmless there. But we got almost done with the paint. And then I was going, wait a minute. This doesn't look right. They'd given us the wrong color of paint. <laughs> so we had to go through, and in the last three and a half hours that we were there, repaint the sanctuary. But um, we sang show tunes, we sang gospel, we sang a little bit of everything while we painted. While we had this amazing tile team come through and put down more tile than any other team had done before. Uh, we had this amazing construction crew who started the footings for the um, medical center, which is adjacent to the church. We had, let me tell you a little bit more about our team. We had everything from 22 year olds to 82 year olds on our team. So there's something for everybody on a mission trip. You can be a painter, you can be a grouter, you can be a tile girl, you can be a concrete pourer, or you can paint rocks. It doesn't matter, there's something for everyone. We would do that, we'd be gross, dirty, filthy, smelly, and we loved it, and then we'd put on our clean t-shirts, that's all we got that was clean, and go do vac vacation Bible school for 40 to 60 kids. <clears throat> and we did our little puppet shows, we did our arts and crafts with them, we prayed with them, we sang songs with them, we loved them, and they loved us back. Their faces are beautiful, they had these beautiful, honest, pure faces. They look at us like, you're not some crazy Americans, you're just here to love us. And we did. And we gave them kazoos. Their parents didn't love us so much after that. But it was just wonderful and amazing. And it, Sammy's not going to recruit you, but I will. <laughs> I want to say, go talk to Chuck. Talk to anybody who's been on a mission trip team. Step out of your little comfort zone. Because for me, this was out of the comfort zone. But we didn't have to sleep 40 people on the, on the floor together. We did have our own rooms. That was nice. We had baths. That was nice. Um, then uh, at the end of the trip, we did have some, <coughs> some downtime, and we hung out at the... Um, rainforest and we got to go do some amazing tours, zip line, zip line on the volcano. I got ashed, which was way cool. Um, so just, it's just an amazing time to be a servant of God and to be a servant of the church and then to get to feel the love. So that is an opportunity that happens every July. So this year we have a team of 13 people going from our church. So next year, think about talking to Chuck in September, because I'm sure he's going to be starting his team together then. Now, briefly, because I haven't been on this trip, is the Kenya trip. The Kenya trip works with an orphanage. They go in August, amazing group of people, about eight to 10 people. It's kind of hard to get a group larger than that together to go to Kenya. But uh, they go, they go to the same orphanage, They've done mattresses, they've, done, they've loaded literally pillowcases full of supplies and tools and anything that's going to help a child survive and thrive in Kenya. And it's, again, amazing, worthwhile, way out of the comfort zone. And they, too, at the end of their trip, try to have like a day and a half safari. Last year, they didn't get their safari because they got their a day and a half late because the Kenya airport had a fire. 
is basically the same as if you look at DFW and its surrounding little hangers around it. All of DFW burned, but just you had a couple of little corporate jet hangers on the end. That's what <coughs> our amazing team flew into. I know, it's like a lot of prayers were going on for them. They got there, they were greeted, they had a fabulous trip. They were God's people in the world. That was amazing. So that's, that's how our church, again, extreme, radical hospitality that doesn't stay here, it goes out. It's our opportunity to share, our opportunity to love, our opportunity to receive back. So that's that. Now let me talk to you about First Friends. How many of you actually walked up to the front of the church to join the church? How many of you stood there by yourselves and didn't have anybody there with you and you felt really awkward? I didn't either because I had a first friend come up. Having a first friend just kind of helps take that edge off that <coughs> initial, I'm standing in front of 300, 400, 500 people, not to mention the video people, and go, <laughs> okay, I just made a commitment before God and everybody. To be a member. I'm going to uphold this church with my prayers, my presence, my gifts, my service, and my witness. Oh my, that's kind of intimidating. Mm -hmm. And then you have a person like Michael, like Sammy, like Leah, like me. We've been around for a few years and we could say, stand here for a minute, then when the choir sings, we're going to face the choir, then all these people are going to shake your hands, then we're going to get your picture made, you're fill out some paperwork, and you're officially a member of the church and we love you. That is the coolest thing to get to do for somebody is just welcome them into the church. This is, this is their, you're their first friend. You're their first contact sometimes, although some people have already been in the church visiting for months or even years. So they already have a pretty comfortable base. So, and they can recruit their own first friends to come up. That's okay. They don't have to have an official first friend. Although, we first friends know where the goodies are. So we take, the, we take our new members, make sure they are, have all their paperwork officially signed and filled out, completed. Then they get the goodie bag. They get their picture made so that they too can be in our newsletter. So, I've given you more information than you can possibly absorb at one time, but I do encourage you to consider being a first friend, being a greeter. That is a cool way to get a lot of love back. Um, it's real easy to get sucked into the vortex of this church, whether you want to or not. I was really not ready to be, but I was, and I wouldn't have it any other way. And we encourage you and invite you to participate as well. Thank you very much. I have information on the trip that's going to happen in 2014 if you all would like to see it, just to see what goes on and what's required, and I'll, I'll pass things out. How do we get connected with the locations in Costa Rica and Kenya, do you know? Uh, you talked to Chuck Graff. I mean, how did the church how did the take church? that location? Uh, we have a, with Costa Rica, I can speak on that, we have a missionary, Ray Zirkle, we have a missionary, Ray Zirkle, who's been in Costa Rica for ooh, 10 or 15 years. He's, he's on, on site. And uh, he is also part of their uh, seminary there. And I don't know the exact uh, connect, how they connected, but anyway, he and uh, Ray and Chuck have been friends for years. And about once a year, I want to say end of January, um, Ray and his wife Lydia and their two girls get to come home on furlough. And um, she's from Alabama and he's from Houston or vice versa. Anyway, our church has been such a support. They swing by and either we'll have coffee together, we'll get the mission trip team together so we can just catch up on what's going on. And uh, the I have to add, and I didn't say this earlier, the medical center clinic that they're building next door to the church is functional, 
They're building an apartment overhead for the nursing staff uh, who will be there pretty much 24 hours a day. Um, the church where we're talking is about, about an hour and a half, two hours away from San Jose, but it's 20 miles south of the Nicaraguan border. So they get a lot of Nicaraguan refugees and on the social ladder, economic ladder, here's the bottom rung, here are the Nicaraguan refugees. They get nothing. So, um, and then I'm gonna get really emotional, I'll try to suck it up here. Uh, we were, the second time we got to go, we were building, uh, digging the footings for a, uh, at a little church that's in one of the refugee areas. And, okay, another cool thing, side note. As you're driving up to um, Puerto Viejo, Sarah Piquet, there's a sign that says, Collins Street Bakery, Corsicana, Texas. <laughs> and you go, what? That's where the majority of their pineapples for their dried fried pineapples for their uh, fruit cake. Fruit cake. <laughs> it's all raised right there. What they don't sell, they sell to Dole. So, so anyway, here we are at this little church at Loma Linda, and we're, I mean, this was really nasty, dirty, hard work, and I was doing, um, I'm a Rodman. You know what a Rodman <laughs> is? I was taking the, the rebar and help tying the, the rods around it to build the cage so they could pour the concrete over that to build the footings. <laughs> so there you go. Anyway, um, as we were doing that, remember these people have nothing. They brought out, these ladies who've been watching us, brought out fresh pineapple cut. And it, it was just, I cannot tell you how wonderful it was. You could smell the pineapple coming. You could feel the love. And they so wanted to make us feel, they just wanted us to know how grateful they were. And that was just such an amazing feeling. And then the next day they brought us fresh squeezed lemon juice like no other on the face of the earth. So that, that you can't put in a newsletter and convey that feeling. You can't, you can't just get the words across. Oh yeah, we went and I was a rod man and I did this nasty, dirty work and I was really grimy and I don't like being grimy, but it was still fun. And we worked with all these wonderful, cool children at, at Vacation Bible School who just hugged us and wanted us to not, not leave. You can't put that in a newsletter. I can't even tell you right now how big my heart felt. So how you hook up with them, it's a God thing. God just set it all up for us and just allowed us to be there and allows us to continue to go back. So it's wonderful. I'll like say one more thing about the Costa Rica trip and is that they do not or didn't have until we got there and correct me if i'm wrong they didn't even have soap to take baths with so we started soap on a rope and i think we're going to continue to do that for, for everybody because they didn't even know what a bar of soap looked like so if you ever want to buy a bunch of soap and give it to chuck he'll be more than happy to take it to Ken, i mean to uh, costa rica and Chuck is very, he's a, I always call him mountain man because he loves to kayak. And he goes fishing in Canada and takes a group up there and they sleep out in the, in the woods. You know, I mean, they really rough it. But he is one amazing human being and a, a person who God has put on this earth to do those things to make this church a better place. And I have worked with him for three, four years, I guess. And I learn every day what a good heart and a kind person he is. And I think you would enjoy being on a trip with him because he is more fun than you would ever imagine. And he makes you feel right at home. And he lets me go and do <coughs> what I want to do. And we work well together, but I can't say enough for Chuck. And He's right now at Caddo Lake with a group of 35. So they're on a camping trip this week. 
They have a camping, I think we have a camping trip to Beaver's Bend in September that's supposed to really be a fun trip. My husband and I are going to go on that one, but it's just, there are so many things that you can get involved in. Some of you have children, some of you don't. So it, but you can bring the kids on the camping trips and, and it's all a lot of fun. And I think you would enjoy part of it just to see, you know, just to give it a try. And like Betty says, if you, I've not been to, to Costa Rica, someday I hope to be able to go. But at this point, we haven't been able to do that yet. But uh, I will, and um, with having a child in Indonesia, I see things I've never seen before. So, you know, there are things all over the world that we don't know about, but the only way to know about that is to get involved. And so that's why we're here preaching to you all and encouraging you to take part in something if you want to, because that's what this church is built on. You're our next generation. You're our hope in our future because we are much older and we are walking behind you all and you will make this world a better place. Thank you.